Hello everyone, Zeno and Zimmy here, and welcome back to Dicey Warriors Gundam. And before people ask, no, you want your Yokushiki to be level 9 before you get to the last mission. Yeah, there's a lot of grinding. This is the reason why Shara's pilot level is so ridiculously high. And yeah, the Yokushiki never appears as, a, as somebody you can pilot in original mode. Mode for Shara. Or any other pilot. So again, I will be having to talk about it. Made combat. Thankfully, it's got more missions, so I shouldn't worry too much. Immediately head down to try and save Emma. The Yakushiki is essentially a glass cannon that can't really take feels too well. That isn't to say it doesn't have, it isn't good at clearing mooks, it's just, it is better at something else entirely. In fact, the specials even exemplify this with the fact that level 4 specials are the only thing that's really good at crowd clearing. So, the Hyakushiki is unique in story, considering this is the prototype Zeta Gundam. And it shows design-wise, the combo-wise it definitely is not. This means a whole different beast. This is also the only mobile suit, I believe, that Shara uses that isn't red. Which is weird. I don't said that the game didn't try and hide his identity. Because I would have definitely made the joke of what are you talking about? That's definitely not Shar. Shar has a mask, but Kawashi has sunglasses. Because I love that, just how people just pretend to not know that it isn't Shar. I love when people just pretend to just not know and act completely shocked when there is a big reveal that, no, he is Shar. And he actually outright says that he is Shar. I love that. Now we can get to see Shakushiki's shining moment of it's an ace killer. This is the big difference between it and the Gelug. 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 I cannot say it. You know what I mean. The Yakushiki is, is meant to be just an ace killer and not really meant to be a field taker. Essentially, it's the exact opposite of his previous mobile suit.
It's also pretty fast, but also very fragile. So you want to try and make sure that you you want to make sure that you just don't get hit too much. Also, you'll notice a very odd thing with Shor's story. Shor's the only one, only one who you can hit, only one in every story mode he has, where you can capture all the fields, and the mission will not end. I suck at hitting these things, apparently. Sadly, at this point, none of the missions literally just will they get there quick enough. Our final objective won't ever appear until we until we have all our allies there, and I'm surprised Emma is not catching up. Yeah, I'm going to have to head back for her. What's going on with Emma? This has never happened before. I guess I'll just... Oh my god, Emma! So until Emma starts reaching the drop point, we can't actually do anything about it. This is going to be a longer episode than I thought, but all because of Emma. Where are you going? We literally have to wait for Emma. At this rate, Camille's gonna get himself killed. And we're probably gonna have all the enemies wiped out. Ignore them. Get to the drop zone. Gosh. Good.
And this is where the Hyakushiki's just ace killer, effectively being an ace killer, comes into play. You'll notice that I can just keep just stonlocking these two without trying. This is what a what an ace killer effectively can do. We need parts. And here we go. That was stressful. <sighs> that usually is not a stressful mission. It became a stressful mission. Oh my god, Emma. Next time, we'll be on Jabra. Again. And we'll, and we'll eventually be doing Jabra again later in Camille's story. So, this is Zeno and Azuma. Signing out. God me.